All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ayo Gutierrez, live here in the Philippines. It's 10 o'clock in the evening. It's really getting late, but you know what? I have special guests for tonight, and they are well-respected writers in the United States. And, um, you know, the rest of the members of the Poets League, Poets League are actually waiting for this one. And not only that, but their fans and their friends in the, in the planet, okay, are here to tune in and watch our lovely couple who are also writers, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, how about we give a big round of applause, a virtual applause to our writers, David and Sharon Wagoner. Good evening, David and Sharon, how are you? Good evening, we're doing very well. We're very I, glad to be here with you. Yes, it's, I am really honored to have um, met you here virtually, Sharon. This is the first time. I always uh, communicate with David. Um, you know, I've met him uh, a few years back and I, I really respect David. He's been a great friend. He's been a good, great you know, influence to all of us. And it's been a support to all the writers that he knows. A really great friend. Now I see that it's still daylight. What time is it in New Mexico? You're in New Mexico, right? Yes, it, it's about eight in the morning. Yeah, it's 8 in the morning, so good morning to both of you. You know what? Um, tonight or today, we are going to celebrate not only the literary success of this lovely couple, but you know what? It is also a celebration of their marriage. Because I saw that on Facebook. I stopped a bit. <laughs> you guys just recently had your anniversary. Like, how many years have you been together? 49. 49 years. You think we were tired of each other, but if we don't watch it, we get to talking when we go to bed and we talk all night. It's the same problem for the first date. <laughs> <laughs> that is so sweet. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't talk all night the first day. <laughs> <laughs> were you that quiet? <laughs> yes, very quiet. Mesmerized by her beauty. <laughs> We we were. It was her intelligence. <laughs> She's a very intelligent woman. Yeah, so why you? Not Intelli intelligent enough, she knew better than to have much to do with me. So I just <laughs> followed her all over the place until she finally got used to it. <laughs> you, know, you would sit at the same table at lunch, just down a ways, and he looked at me a lot. And my friend said, "He looks at you a lot. Do you like him?" <laughs> and I said, well, it won't last very long. We're in math class together, and I am not going to pretend to be stupid in there. <laughs> but little did I know, he's the son of an engineer, that he was going, whoa, baby. <laughs> <He liked me. laughs> Both of you are a great catch to each other. Um, David mentioned to me that, you know, he was this typical cowboy, and you are his cowgirl. You met at the ranch, was that, is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he always loved cowboy films when he was a little boy. He said if somebody told him when he was seven that he was going to marry a cowgirl and ride off on a horse after his wedding, that he would have just gone, my life is complete. <laughs> <laughs> Dream thing true for David. And you guys are you know, celebrating wonderful years together. And uh, I really enjoy this moment to talk to a, a couple who are both writers. And um, tell us, tell me about your childhood. Um, who are the authors that you grew up with? Um, who are these authors that influenced you when you were young? Favorite books and your aunt reading to you? Because I know you two are bookworms. You just read a lot of books and you are also both historical yeah. fanatics. <laughs> so please tell me about your story. And my Kindle library has like 1,300 books in it. Oh. oh my goodness. Have you read them all? And I've read every one. And, and there's bookshelves all over the house. So <laughs> this room, it has books on down there. And there's another room with books. <laughs> Books everywhere. When we <laughs> moved here, the people said, what are in all these boxes? They're so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> all book stuff inside, huh? 
How about you, Sharon? Sharon, what are the books that you love as a child? I was born in the 80s. I know I missed a lot of great writers back then during your time. So uh, educate us who were the really the rising authors uh, during your time that you followed or you read. My aunt was a teacher and she would read to me. Treasure Island and what else? Treasure Island. Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, of I course. I love that. I love that. And then Tale of Two Cities and then Let's see, there was Swiss Family Robinson. That was fun. <laughs> so he got hooked on books there. <laughs> and uh, so, I, <laughs> so I probably spent the next month climbing trees. <laughs> <laughs> the effect of reading those uh, adventure <laughs> books, huh? Yes. I, I'm uh, also interested in learning about Sharon's book list. What are the books that made into your bookshelf, Sharon, when you were a young girl? Um, I, I think uh, Little House on the Prairie uh, series, um, it, it very much where I grew up in Kansas, it was similar life to that, but when things were being settled. And uh, Black Beauty, uh, and uh, it's about a horse, and yeah. um, uh, uh, Diary of Anne Frank. I read that as well. I love that. Uh, so uh, those books started us on our way. <laughs> and I'm sure you have met a lot of great authors throughout. Now, what are you two writing? What are your genres? I know, uh, Sharon, you write a lot. So what are those books or what are kind, what are those writings that you do? Do you do blogs? Uh, do you I do mainly magazines? work in magazines. Jeez. And you know, when you, you take a course, they, they tell you, you have to subscribe to this one magazine while you're taking this course. I write for those magazines, mainly history type ones. So like, uh, you're taking uh, a course on French poetry and you want to understand uh, coaching ends from that period. Well, I write things about what the coaching in is like or what the life was like then. And it appears in various educational magazines. So yeah. I, I try the, to give you that. that she's, it, the, she's the creative one and can express herself with poetry. Great. And uh, you, you, David, you two collaborated on several books. Yes. And you have your individual books. And we're going to show our she, audience tonight. Like I said, the books. creative one, she comes up with the ideas. <laughs> and we work them out together. <laughs> yeah. You really work together. At what, at what point in your married life you started writing together? Or has it been right from the very start? You already oh, yes, were right from together. the very start. It was like, could you listen to my paper and see, you know, if it's going to be a good paper or not? And uh, so we're reading to each other. And um, really, right from the start. That is so amazing. <laughs> I really love that relationship. David, you told me you have a different job. Um, you shared this to me several times. And uh, will you tell us about what you were doing before? As yeah, you definitely concerned? wasn't doing anything similar to a writer. No. Tell, tell her about your job. You, uh, I ended up blue collar jobs. <laughs> but you were a manager. You taught machinists, right? It didn't take me long to figure out that most of my supervisors didn't know what they were doing, so. 
Well, I ended up smoothing things over, finding people that knew what to do and what didn't know what to do and would teach them how things needed to be done. Highly technical, and, highly technical. Choose, chew them out. You don't pick on him. <laughs> Smooth it over so there was no bullies. But he was, he was taking computer science courses and he started out to be a machining apprentice because he'll pay you while you learn, which we needed to get through school. Yes. Uh, but it turned out the two things merged while he was doing this. And part of why they didn't know what was going on is these are traditional machinists who learned in a hands-on way. Suddenly they're putting computerized controls mm -hmm. and CAD CAM on these machines. Yes. And these guys are lost. Well, he was learning that stuff. So the two career, mm -hmm. the career in his education merged because he thought that he would be a machinist to help put him through school then he'd go do something else well he ended up in charge of the shop instead because they moved into the 21st century yes yeah and um the adaptability of david was uh, so evident and he led people with a highly technical job and uh, david told me that in between his job, he just couldn't drop writing. I think it's also part of you, if you are really a writer, whatever you do, whatever profession you may be in, you just cannot neglect this passion of yours. It will come back to you again and again. Is that what happened to you, David? Because still today, you're still writing. Hello, David and Sharon, are you still with me? So ladies and gentlemen, I am interviewing David and Sharon Wagoner, and they're from New Mexico. And uh, you know what? I really love this top. Okay, we had a short, we had a short break there. <laughs> Got disconnected again, but uh, yeah, we, I was telling our audience, you know what, I, I really love the couple, David and Sharon Wagoner. They told us about their love story. You know what, 49 of years of being together, wow, that's not more than a milestone, really. It's a legacy. It's a legacy that they are leaving to their uh, families. And um, we also heard about their favorite authors. They also talk about their professional lives in a bit. Now, I think everyone is excited. To well, uh, it was a love story most of the time, although she would get irritated at me. I'd come home at, I'd come home from work at midnight and I'd be excited and talk too loud and wake up our daughter. And then my daughter would cry for an hour and a half after that before she could go back to sleep. Because daddy went to bed. So, so I'm not sure that was part of the love story. Yeah. <laughs> those, are, those are some of the memorable things, you know what? Like that. You remember about a person. I hope you don't snore, David. <laughs> no. Yeah, there was one time she she woke me up, pushing on my shoulder to wake me up, and I said, "Hey, quit that! I'm not snoring." <laughs> and she, she says, "No, no, there's a bat in here," and I said, "No, no, there's no bat in the house. Go back to sleep. You're just dreaming." <laughs> Then, then, then he's about laying that, there in a about that time a bat flies over the bed maybe a foot. <laughs> that was a bat. <laughs> then what did you say? What did you say? Hey, hey, there's a bat in here. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had to get up and open a window and then we watched this poor bat fly all around the house. Oh, and, and well, he found the window and then out it, he went. It'd go down like two feet and then fly around the house again until it finally found where that window was and whoosh. <laughs> were you screaming all the time, Shara? When the bats were inside? Were you screaming? No, you just, no. <laughs> I, when I woke him up, he goes, go back to sleep, you're dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> there were 
bats, David. There were bats. You know, are you seeing the screen here, David and Sharon? Are you seeing your beautiful photo here? Oh, thank you. <laughs> how old, how old were you when beautiful. this was taken? Sharon is so uh, pretty. Just uh, just a couple years ago, uh, uh, there was a photographer at our, our church and we had it taken then. Yeah, and uh, I took it from Amazon. I did some research about Sharon and uh, you actually, your work appeared on Jane Austen Magazine and Georgian Index. And uh, you know what interests me most is that you love etymology you like to study the origin of words is that correct sharon yes 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 uh um well here's one yeah uh, americans say cookie but most other people say biscuit like the british do mm -hmm. well, it's that word is an artifact from the anglo-dutch wars in the 1660s because there was a Dutch settlement in, uh, on Manhattan where New York is, and it was called New Amsterdam, and mm -hmm. the Dutch used the word cookie. Well, it ended up, the, uh, as part of the settlement of the war, uh, Manhattan was given to the British, but a lot of Dutch remained. And so with American English, the word cookie entered American English. That's a piece of history there, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm sure <laughs> I would love to have a separate, um, you know, call again with Sharon because I also love to study about the origin of the words. And I think it's important yeah. because uh, it, it, it yeah. differs from every Mr. country Lopez, to gonna, another. Yes, David? You get a great lesson in history just by looking up where words came from. Exactly. Yes, I, I believe so. Um, you know, Sharon, hands down. Um, I really, I really admire you. Um, you are the angel behind, you know, behind David. You are his uh, wings. <laughs> and March, so you are the hidden angel. And finally, David revealed you to us. So thank you so much, Sharon, for uh, all your influence and um, support to all of us. And David here, I just put it... Um, he said that uh, you also grew up in a ranch. And uh, one thing that I remember you told me, David, was that when you were young, I think you were like seven years old, when your teacher asked you because she saw you reading a lot of books all the time, like she asked you to give, uh, she asked you to give a summary of the book or what was that, a review? Yeah. Tell me about it. So... If a teacher and the library and the librarian saw me reading all kinds of books and she tried to stop me, she said, those books are above your reading level. You won't understand them. <clears throat> and so I told her, hey, I know all the words. So I would get these books all the time and she finally talked to my teacher and so they decided they were going to help me write book reports to find out if I really did understand them or not. And, and, and you did. And you did, with so flying that's, colors. That's basically where I started writing, was writing book reports to prove that I really didn't know what. <laughs> you proved them They wrong. thought he was reading above his grade level. And I think that's important as well. I remember also, go, you know, when I was younger, I would go to the library and I would go to the history section, philosophy. I didn't understand the books, especially on the legal books. But finally, eventually, um, all of those things that I learned about, um, I started to assimilate all of those things and they make sense already. So it's important that we keep reading. And Imran Khan, our friend from uh, Pakistan, told me that we just... You have you read around eight thousand books already, yeah. or is that an understatement? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like reading the Iliad and the Odyssey was trying to understand it. Some of the the sexual things I didn't understand. Of course, it's like at that age, 
like why on earth would people turn a boat around just to see some girl? <laughs> <laughs> Alien and Odyssey, how old were you when you read that? I think I was eight, maybe. Oh my, you are too, you are too young. Impressive, <laughs> impressive, David. <laughs> I should tell my kids. But, so get he, loved, he loved the armor, which kind of predicted that he would be making things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's important that we get the right influence because um, you know, all of these books will come back to us. I remember my favorite book um, is Secret Garden, The Secret Garden. And another one is The Christmas Carol. And all oh. till, till today, I, I still read those books every year. I make sure that I go back because somehow that sense of wonder and adventure, um, they have stuck with you throughout the years. And you want to go back and reminisce all of those wonderful things that happened between you and the characters in that book. Okay? So here, before we go further, let's give them the great news now. Because out of the many books that you have written, you are giving not just one or two, but you have three free ebook downloads. Go ahead, David and Sharon. Why don't you invite our audience? Yeah, come read the books. Go ahead. You'd like scratches on scraps. was poetry. some poetry like Sharon mentioned just a little bit ago I would come home with a line or two of poetry written on something where I stole a little bit of time during break just to write a thought down hence the title scratches and, so, and scraps yes so that's yeah that's that became thing. the inspiration for that title and putting together Sharon, tell us about the inheritance. There are poems from each of us. Uh, and the inheritance is a story about a nephew who inherits a antique shop from his uncle. There's a very annoying cat that is living in the, the building and uh, the nephew has all kinds of troubles, but he doesn't quite know what's going on so everything seems it comes out different than you expect it to by the time the story is over so it's a, a little bit amusing yeah thank you um you love cats <laughs> and your, your, your cover is uh quite amusing. of course the promise of jobs is uh, it's hard we have so many uh, authors from around the world in there, including you. Yeah, and I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it was just a chance for everybody to say something about how much they want oral peace. Yeah, I, I love that this project, you know what, um, called for peace. You know, when how many people we get along with and how many people <laughs> think the same. Yeah, they, I, we think about divisions in our world, but everybody came together to do this book, and they all are desperate for world peace, a uh, better yes. world for their children. Yeah, we're all different. Like, you're a young, beautiful woman, and <laughs> we're at the end of life. I'm still a funny looking old man. But we all want world peace. <laughs> that is so true. Well, At any given time, we want it for ourselves. We want it for our children. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, starting today, it's already, um, these are already free to download, this ebook. So, why don't you go ahead and check these books? Because uh, I guarantee you, David and Sharon deliver. Okay? I have read them and I can really testify that they are great writers. You know what? Um, this is a rare chance for you to get to know the minds of people who were born like years behind us and they are crossing another generation. Um, baby boomers, millennials, now you have the Gen, Gen Z. You see um, the digital natives. Can you just 
see how the wisdom that are uh, that they, they have gained throughout those years and decades living on this planet so why don't you get a piece of their mind for that okay and moving on let's just have a you know let's browse through some of their books because uh um they are really really uh, uh they also write in, in in different genres this one is an arabian adventure sharon please tell us more about this book uh, it's it's an adventure and it's a friendship between two boys from opposite sides of the world. Uh, one is a European boy and um, one is uh, a boy from uh, Arabia and they meet in the middle of a sandstorm and they're in a very desperate situation but they manage to come through it and then uh, through a series of hilarious events, they end up with the offspring of a famous racing camel. And um, some people who think they own the camel have it for a while and they actually mistreat it. But then we see how the boys train it with kindness and love and what a difference it makes. So. We hope the book will teach some things about friendship and about being good to animals um, in, yeah. in a, a way that's an adventure, and two, but not heavy handed. The two boys find out that they have, they actually share a faith, even though <clears throat> the books they learn the faith from are different, the Christian Bible and the Quran. The uh, Quran. The Quran. Yeah, there's a, a scene where the boys have run out of water and uh, they're still in the middle of the sandstorm. It's still ongoing and they uh, both pray together. And I had some of my Muslim friends read it too uh, to make sure that I didn't offend anybody. And they said, it made me cry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so great to hear. I think that um, children and adults alike will get, will get enjoy out. this book. So tell her about that. <laughs> well, I, I hope that it'll be a fun book to read to your kids. I will. I will definitely get a copy of this one. <laughs> and we have Jinky, our, our friend, our common friend, who illustrated your book. And she did a pretty good job illustrating your uh, Arabian adventure. Oh, beautiful job. And we also talked about the um, David Scratches and Scraps. I have a personal copy of this one. I hope David signed it, but I ordered it on Amazon, so <laughs> I didn't have his uh, signed copy. Looking forward to that in your future books, David. And of course, The Promise of Dobbs, an Thank anthology, you. an anthology from different uh, writers. Were, um, international writers of which I'm very proud to be a part of. Now, uh, Sharon, when I opened fire. my yearnings book on Amazon, I saw a beautiful review from the Devil's Bonfire author, and that's Sharon. What is this about? It's a supernatural western mystery yeah. genre. Okay. What's well, it, it appears to be supernatural, but there is a good explanation in the end. Uh, at the beginning, this guy sees a green uh, campfire. campfire in the distance, and uh, people are murdered in front of it, so he just sees the silhouettes. Well, he tries to find out what happened, and the truth is, that the people were attempting to do a chemical test. So there, then there's a whole murder mystery, but it's set in the Old West. And I always was kind of fascinated by the parts they don't show in a Western movie. Like they go, we went to the assay office and the gold came back like this. Well, what happens in the assay office? How do you do those? chemical things without being boring about it. So I uh, tried to do that in that book and, and uh, make it a, a good mystery. And that's a good description of behind every book that 
Sharon writes, there's something educational. She likes to teach people. What a great and, way. And I, I like to show that. It's a lesson in chemistry and. I, I would like to show that that chemistry isn't boring, that it's pretty exciting. Is that what you, is that what you took in college, chemistry? Uh, I, it's one of the classes, yes. And he had metallurgy, so <laughs> we have some good discussions. <laughs> he, he said one night we're laying in bed and he goes, where else could I find a woman who would want to talk about the metallurgy of Bronze Age swords in the middle of the night? Yes. <laughs> he'll, he'll talk about swords. You really have interesting eyes. <laughs> Talking about uh, any subject under the sun. That must be fun. That must be fun, really. Um, yes, is this a full-blown novel, a short story, or uh, a novella, Sharon? It's short, short story. Yeah. Okay. Now, from here, you write poetry. You also write this kind of uh, mystery, supernatural stories. The next uh, books that we're going to show you are, I think, their favorite topics because these are history. Um, is that? I don't know about when health is uh, over. Please tell us about these books, Sharon. These are older books, right? When Hell Freezes Over is set in uh, about 1810, and there was an extremely severe winter all over the world because there was a, a big eruption of a volcano. And uh, New Orleans, which is the southern part of the United States, the water actually froze there in the, the bays. Yes, so you could go skating on the Mississippi River, which, of course, that never happens that far south. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's a murder mystery set then, and once again, it's one that appears to be supernatural. It looks as though the devil killed a guy that had been blackmailing a lot of people. Oh. But and it turns out there's a, a, a explanation that is true and actual. As much as anything, it's, it's somebody going for vigilante, somebody going for vigilante justice, mm -hmm. and people see him. See people see him on his way. He's got on a black cloak, and of course, because he's moving fast, skating, you can see this cloak flapping. Don't get worried about. Yeah, he look. People think they saw the devil on the Mississippi. Is this a story that you two created? David is so uh, into it, or is this a... Uh... No, we talk over so much. It, it's hard to really say anything is totally by one or the other of us because we talk them over so much. <laughs> <laughs> he shared all of this you ideas. To him to him and he comments. She's the creative idea person and but we still talk over the story and then I tend to fill in character a little bit. We back for I came to understand brothers from beating each other up. <laughs> you have to out what motivates them and how to fool them into behaving. <laughs> Oh, how about this one, um, Sharon, the taming, how do you pronounce this? Rosacea? Rosacea. Rosacea? It's where you, you tend to get red on your um, cheeks and yeah. it, it's an allergy. So this one is just something you can do if you have that. Is it like a... What is this kind of book? What is the genre? It's uh, how to deal with an allergy that's an ongoing problem. Oh, okay, okay. Instead of becoming a rash, it just turns your skin red. 
Interesting. Uh, is this and something that so a lot of people have had those genes for it since Diana had them, and uh -huh. uh, it's just a way to deal with it. Yeah. So uh, not my usual thing, but I thought it would help people. And Great. then the next one is off the pages of history and onto your plate. I took just uh, a couple ordinary meals like hamburgers and french fries that, you know, you might make uh, on the grill in your backyard. And I tell where all the different mm -hmm. uh where the Meals ingredients come from and foods. where the first people turned it into a recipe. Yes. So uh, just a little history on some uh, just, common meals. Just like we mentioned earlier, you can find history in words. You can find it on your, on your, on plate. your dinner plate too. You, yes. I see yeah, your wisdom spilling into... Yeah, spilling yeah. onto paper, um, you write what you love to do, you write about your life, your beliefs, your lifestyle, everything. Um, it's just varied, you know, you don't really stick to one, and um, the versatility of the two of you are quite impressive, okay? <laughs> yeah, we have widespread interests. Uh, I think maybe wider span than most people do, but it, I don't know, makes it interesting. And what you find is one thing connects to another that um, so many things are related, like words in history, where does the name of the food come from? It's probably where the food originated, but also how did different foods come together to be a meal? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I just remember right now, I, I came across the word, um, you know, it, it's a name, diarrhea, and the people before, I don't know, I just forgot the details, they thought that it's a beautiful name, but they didn't realize that, you know, a diarrhea, what it was for that, and they named their daughter, so it's important that even before the name, oh no, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> oh dear, poor girl. <laughs> oh my God. I know. Um, David and Sharon, are there books that you haven't written, but you plan to do? Um, some sort of your legacy. What are those books that you think that you really want to write? Uh, right now, we've uh, got a couple things in the works. And uh, one is a trilogy, and we have the first book written, and we have over half the second book. It's kind of a treasure hunt. Oh, that's not the one. The one that's a trilogy is the one about getting your power. So it's about uh, teenage tw uh, twins uh, who are a boy and a girl, so they're... Uh, but for, eternal, for, eternal for eternal twins. Uh, and it's about them finding their powers. So it's a sort of Harry Potter-ish type story, but we did a little different setting. Didn't want to just rip that off. But it's, it's about finding your personal power. And... Um, the two kids face a lot of challenges, but they become very great magicians in the end. So it's a bit of fantasy has to do with magic and... Great story. When are you going to publish that? Uh, it's probably coming out uh, early next year because uh, we have one book to finish yet. But uh, the first one is The Flute Maker's Apprentice. The second is The Queen of the Night. And the third is The Cloak of Power. You are busy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't rest. You don't rest. And uh, I love that. I, I love the philosophy that you embrace. I love the discipline there as writers. David and Sharon, before we end this one again, I'd like to invite and just go oh, to that. Good. Go ahead, David, you're saying something. We've put two different races in this one, so some of the problems are just 
two different peoples getting along and understanding each other one of them thinks women can't do magic and then the other one women are leaders so they don't understand each other and mm -hmm. uh the two kids are able to bridge the gap by making a friendship with a, a boy from the other group so it's about bridging gaps coming together understanding each other I love that you dwell on the light themes, you dwell on the happy and the adventurous, you know, spirit. We kind of need that today because um, the people, most people are like gloomy and uh, the, the surrounding is bleak, you know, because of what we are going through amid the pandemic. So a little, a little kind of this story will lift our spirits and that's important. Yeah, I like reading science fiction, but I won't even look at a post-apocalyptic story anymore. They're just too depressing and too... We don't need upbeat. that. It's, they're too cheap. It's They're not upbeat enough. Yeah, we don't, we don't need another stressor in our lives. <laughs> now, before we end, yeah. you know... Um, Again, I'd like to repeat this to our viewers uh, today. Starting today, right after the interview, I would like to invite everyone to get the free book, uh, free ebook, free downloads of uh, Sharon and David Wagoner's ebooks. The titles are The Inheritance, the other one is Scratches and Scraps, and the third one is the, um, uh, about, what's this about peace, David? A promise of dogs, okay? A promise of dogs. Is that correct? Dogs, yes. yes. Okay. So, yes, three books, free to download today, starting today, and you have uh, a few more days to go. But I'd like to suggest that you start downloading these great books from these authors. And now, before I let you go, David and Sharon, please give us um, some of the writing and pieces of advice about writing. What can you tell people who want to share their stories but don't know how to get started? Okay, any writing advice that you can give to our audience tonight? Yeah, there's there's an idea or theme behind every story, every writer would figure out what that is first and spend some time for figuring out how you're going to present it what's underneath the story thank you david how about you sharon uh i think that you have to be exciting and have forward motion or people will put it down and read something else so it's important to think of something that will really interest people and will really have yeah. a plot that moves you forward to keep you interested. Um, yeah, for, for her, the first sentence, the first paragraph is all important. It has to make somebody, wow, this is different. And I want to read the rest of the story. True, something that captures the attention that would make the readers want to stay with it. And you know, you already know this experience that when you like grab a book and you hook the readers right from the back and they stay with you and they can't put you down. That's the goal. That's the goal that, you know, our writers will not just throw the book away after reading a chapter or two because, you know, the story is lackluster <laughs> or something that's, uh, been, that's tried. So originality comes in as well. Thank you so much. And um, any final words uh, to say to your readers, to your readers who have uh, actually downloaded, who have bought your books, what can you tell to your readers today? What can they expect from David and Sharon in the future? More adventures, more adventures. Um, oh, to, uh, one more funny story. 
Uh, when I was a little girl, I used to ride a pony to school. I went to a one-room schoolhouse, like Little House in the Prairie, uh, out in western Kansas. And the pony would just show up at 4 o'clock to take me home. But if I was reciting, he would hear me. And uh, the windows were up a little way, so he'd stand on his hind hooves and put his front hooves against the building, <laughs> and he'd look in the window. Well, here's this big horse head looking in the window sideways. Well, the kids are just falling on the floor, <laughs> and the teacher would just point to the corner, and I'd have to go stand in the corner before I went home because like the horse was like horsing that. around. <laughs> I like the so I with you. Mary had a little lamb, <laughs> followed her to school one day and made all the children laugh. The <laughs> the there was a getting... little pinto pony, and I rode him barrel racing. Uh huh. So little red-haired girl, little pinto pony, and uh, he loved to run and slide around the barrels. He you just have... he enjoyed that. He would come running up to you and slide to a stop. He liked it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have a lovely life there when you are not writing what are you doing uh we have uh we're working toward a butterfly garden here uh we have two and a half acres uh, our daughter had in mind we buy a condo when we came here. Well, then we bought two and a half acres. And she was like, oh, my God, are you ever going to stop? But uh, it had been overgrazed so much. Most of the wildflowers were gone. So we planted 50 had... pounds of water, wildflower seeds when we first got here. There are quite a few wildflowers out there now. And we planted clover and uh, we're having more butterflies each year. And it gets Beautiful. noisy when you walk through all of the bees buzzing. There are bees buzzing through the flowers. Yeah, you just hear so, this buzz yeah, when you so go. Even somebody as nearly deaf as me can hear. <laughs> <laughs> David and Sharon, thank you so much for this wonderful time that you spent with me. I'm sure our audience really enjoyed listening to both of you. I wish you more success in your literary endeavor, and I wish you more years of being together, happy and contented. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to our audience and thank them. Yes. Bye, goodbye. guys. And oh, big hug to everybody. Thank you for giving us, talking to us and giving us an opportunity to show us more people how silly we can be <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure it's my pleasure have a great weekend david and sharon i'll talk to you soon goodbye thank you